how do you make a beefier lasagna with beautiful, very easy, cheesy layers? Well, well, I'm gonna walk you through it, my friends, and my version is way quicker than the traditional. This is my very best lasagna. So first up, we're gonna start on the meat sauce. Now, I have quite a few little tricks here for how we make our meat sauce in record time, but still like leveling up the flavor game. All right, let's get started in the pan first of all. I just want a little bit of olive oil. And now the beef mince. Now, I have a whole lot of beef mince here. We're making like a monster amount of sauce here. If I put all of this beef in at once, it's gonna take ages to brown and color. And I really want a really like hard sear and some caramelization here, because that's gonna make our sauce beefier and tastier. So, just put half of it in first of all. And now just spread it out in the pan and then leave it alone. So what I want here is for that meat on the bottom to get a really good chance to get all that caramelization I was talking about. And you can't get that if you're messing around with it. So just be patient for about like four, five minutes here and I'll show you what we're looking for then. So let's have a look in here and like this is the kind of situation that we're looking for here. Now, Without getting too food nerdy on you guys, that brown stuff is what happens when there's a reaction between like amino acids and sugars. It's called the Maillard reaction. But all you really need to know is it creates that browning caramelization effect, which gives you the beautiful beefy uh, flavor. So that's why I wanted to do the hard sear on the beef. Now, I'm gonna just season with a bit of salt. And then flip these guys over just in like kind of chunks, and I'll get that brown coloring on the second side as well. Okay, so we are looking really great and beautifully seared in the pan here. Now I'm gonna add in the rest of my beef. Look, you could go ahead and do this in batches, take this out, get more browning, but like I'm pretty happy with the level of flavor and the level of caramelization we've got here. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and throw the rest of this beef in. It's not gonna get as brown, but we're still gonna have that good base sort of layer of flavor. Now you can get in there and start breaking everything up. Just mixing it through and breaking up those big clumps of the beef. Now my beef is just about all cooked through. Now I'm gonna add in the garlic. So if I had have added it at the beginning, uh, it probably would have burnt while I was trying to get that really lovely color on the beef. So that's why we add it after we do that. Next thing we wanna add is some tomato paste. So there's a whole bunch of ingredients that we're gonna use in here that are all about concentrated flavors. Cause I don't wanna spend all day simmering my beef sauce uh, so that my lasagna takes, you know, like an entire age to make. Um, so we need to rely on some of these little cheap ingredients. Tomato paste, one of them. Let's get that in there. And now for the tomatoes themselves. So I'm using a combo here. I'm doing whole peeled tomatoes and crushed tomatoes. So the whole peeled ones, which I'm adding now, they're kind of like, to me, the whole peeled have a little bit more concentration than crushed tomatoes. I find there's less kind of uh, liquidy, watery stuff. Uh, but I do actually want this to be a little bit liquidy because I'm gonna use some no boil lasagna sheets, hence the combo. The peeled tomatoes for the concentration and the crushed tomatoes for a little bit more liquid. Break up those tomatoes as you're mixing them through. And here come the ingredients that you don't wanna tell your Italian grandmother about, uh, but these are going to help us out with boosting that flavor in a short amount of time. So first of all, miso paste. <laughs> this guy is all about boosting that kind of, you know, savory, salty flavor in this dish. So that's gonna go in. And our next very non-traditional ingredient is soy sauce. So by using soy sauce instead of just salt, we're not only getting a salty flavor, but we're getting that extra savory umami kick that, you know, there's a bit of a theme here. Uh, umami is that 
flavor that boosts everything. So we get that in the miso paste, we get that in the tomato paste, uh, and we're now getting that in the soy sauce as well. Now for the herbs and spices, so one more traditional, one not so traditional. Uh, we've got some dried oregano here. And then some star anise. So star anise, yes, and another Asian ingredient, but star anise has this really beautiful kind of effect of making things taste beefier. Uh, so whenever I'm doing a beef stew or a braise or you know this kind of meat sauce, I like to add in some star anise as well. Now mix all of that through, and I do want a little bit of time here for everything to make friends in there, so I'm gonna let that simmer away for about 30 minutes, which is way less than like, you know, the two hours, three hours you'd normally do for a ragu. So that gives us plenty of time to make our cheese sauce, and again, we are totally not making a traditional one, so uh, don't start at me in the comments below. <laughs> Try it before you knock it. Um, we are gonna do, instead of the traditional bechamel, we're gonna use cottage cheese. <laughs> yes, I know, it's gonna be great. Trust me, the cottage cheese gives you this beautiful kind of like a little bit of a sour flavor um, and the texture is creamy and cheesy and yum. So that goes in. And then I want a whole heap of Parmesan cheese here because again, we're going with that umami, savory, salty kind of flavor that we want here. And that goes in. And we want some cream here too. And now nutmeg. So for me, like it's the tiniest amount that we're gonna add here, but it makes all the difference. Like nutmeg just makes a cheese, cheesy sort of sauce taste so much better. All right, just a fine smattering of that. And then a little secret ingredient here is some corn flour, uh, or cornstarch is what you call it in the US. And that is gonna like stabilize the whole thing. So make sure that everything stays together and is nice and creamy and homogenous. Now a little sprinkling of salt here. And this is a no cook cheese sauce because I'm all about the easy today. So all you need to do is mix it together. So cheese sauce done, let's get back and have a look at our meat sauce and I mean, guys, look at this lusciousness. Uh, after 30 minutes and look at that color and how thick and beautiful it is. I mean, it literally looks like we've been simmering it for hours. Let's see how it tastes. Mm. Okay, it is crazy amazing that you can achieve that level of flavor in such a short amount of time. Those little cheat ingredients, the miso paste and the soy sauce, that has totally helped us out here. All right, now what I wanna do is get our star anise pieces out. And now we're ready to get our lasagna all layered up. All right, so we're gonna go layer by layer and uh, a good lasagna is all about good structural integrity. So let's start off first of all with a little bit of our meat sauce. Just a little, I don't need like a full thick layer here. I just want enough so that my noodles don't stick to the bottom of the dish. And now I'm using these no boil lasagna sheets because it's just one less step I have to worry about. Uh, now you want to put one of these in here. And what you're trying to do with these sheets is you really want to get a really nice even layer. So this one's going to fit here like this, but then you can see we've got kind of this uneven shaped gap here. So grab yourself a sheet and break your sheets. And then it's kind of like playing Tetris. So pop that in there, break a little bit off. Fit that in there, and then you have a nice even layer. All right, now in with a little bit more of our tomato sauce. And you want about a third of the tomato sauce in here. We're gonna do three layers of meat. And then spread that out, get right into the corners. And now go in with half of your cheese mixture. Just kind of do little plops first of all, and then spread it out sort of as neatly as you can. Now a little sprinkling of some mozzarella cheese here. and then we layer again. One important thing about these next layers though, is that you remember where it was that you had the broken noodles because we don't wanna put broken noodles on broken noodles because that's not the structural integrity I was talking about. So get yourself a whole sheet in this section and put that down because that's where the broken noodles were, the first layer. And then the broken noodles on this side. And now go again with your meat sauce. and the cheese mixture. 
and the mozzarella. So now we're at our final layer, put the noodles on top and then just pour over the rest of that meat sauce, spread it out. And then you'll see here I've got some extra mozzarella and parmesan cheese. I want to mix that together. So mozzarella, parmesan, and then you want to sprinkle that all over the top. And now this next little tip is all about preserving that beautiful top of cheese we've just put on. So you want to get baking paper first and then your foil. Because if you just put that foil straight on top of the cheese, you'll end up with cheesy foil and not cheesy lasagna. Now let's get this into the oven. It needs 40 minutes. All right, so this is smelling amazing. Let's have a look and see what's been happening in there. Oh, look at that. I mean, that just is one big tray full of joy right there. I've got my beautiful bubbling sauce there. That cheese is melted, but it's not quite browned yet. And I want a really nice golden color. So this needs to go back into the oven for about five or 10 minutes or until that cheese is really golden. All right, so here we go, guys, the masterpiece. I mean, look at the cheese, look at the bubbling sauce. Check out, I mean, this is what I really like for a good lasagna. I mean, I love having these little crispy bits of that noodle or pasta kind of poking out at the edge. Oh, that's always my piece. All right, so this is looking amazing. What you do need to do here, though, is you need to let it rest if you can. I know it looks so delicious, you just want to get right in there. Uh, but just leave it to rest for about 15 or 20 minutes just to allow all those layers to kind of set and cool a little bit. And that means you'll get the perfect slice. So now we're ready to slice. Let's get in here. All right, this is smelling way too good for me not to get right in here. Oh, yum, look at that. This is gonna be good. Wow, honestly, there is so much flavor there. That tomato meat sauce is so beautifully intense and then the creamy cheese and then that soft pasta. Oh, I mean, lasagna just does not get any more perfect than this. I love it. I love it so much. And you know what's incredible? Like, you know how we did, we added those ingredients, right, that are not supposed to be in lasagna. <laughs> but all it does is enhance the more lasagna-y, you know, feeling. Mm. The beefiness, the cheesiness. Perfection. 